On today's show, we're gonna find out whether we can use one of these to make all of these look the same. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, or today it's at 10 because we got a little late start, a little techie issues today, but that's okay. We're here. We're starting. Today's show is going to be an adventure. We are going to find out together in real time whether one of these, an x right color checker passport, can be used to calibrate, calibrate, can I just this wrong, balance across three different camera manufacturers to make the images look the same. Because let's face it, sometimes you're out shooting and you may not have a couple of Lumix cameras, a couple of Canon cameras, a couple of Fuji cameras. Maybe you've got one from one manufacturer, one from another, and you want those pictures to look the same. You want them to have a cohesive look to them. And if they come out of the camera looking differently, as they are going to, then that's a bit of a problem. So what I want to find out is whether I can use the Passport to balance it. Now, if you're not familiar with the Color Checker Passport, the main purpose of this is to set a, a fixed known color balance point for your shots so that any correction you do from there, um, any enhancement, any any printing, any screen work that you do is, is calibrated and true. So if, for example, let's say that you are shooting something, uh, clothing for a company, catalog company, and you need to have that blue shirt represented as that shade of blue, right? If I take a picture of a blue shirt and it looks a little bit more purple by the time it gets to print, I didn't okay. Client's not going to be too happy. It's got to look in print like it does in real life. And so part of that process is calibrating with one of these. Essentially, the way it works, it's really pretty straightforward and simple, is you take a picture of this chart, you take the picture with the camera, ideally camera lens lighting, kind of the everything, um, but as long as you got the camera and the lighting together, you can change lenses, it's usually okay. Anyway, so you, you take a picture with your setup, with one of these, you run it through a little software in Lightroom or a standalone app, and it creates a color profile that you then load onto that picture, and it makes that picture New, I'm going to call it neutral. It makes it balanced. And so the, the whole thing is you will see, and we're going to see all this, you'll see all these little color checks go from some slight variation of what you see here to boom, locked. So what we want to find out is if I do that process across photos from three different cameras, taking the same picture with the same color checker passport in there, whether once they're all, uh, once they've all had the passport profile applied to it, whether they look the same. So that's the objective today. I actually don't know what's going to happen. This is one of those shows where we're going to find out together. With that in mind, for those of you watching live, you are going to see the entire process. For those of you not watching live, you will see a slightly edited version of it because there's going to be a little bit of downtime while I copy files and stuff. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. So if you want to participate in these types of shows and see everything, you got to be here live. Um, if you're okay with the edited version, then you can watch it later. We don't always edit. It's pretty rare that we do, but today we're going to. So that's it. Uh, what have we got here? Our three cameras are the Lumix G9, a Canon 5D Mark II, last Canon I ever bought. That tells you goes back a little ways. I can't believe the size of this thing. And a Fuji X100. Fun little camera. Loved this thing when I was using it um, until it had a severe aperture issue, which I have gotten fixed, but um, I kind of moved away from it after that. But anyway, nice little camera, this Fuji X100. So the Fuji, the Canon, and the Lumix. So we're going to take a picture of Betty back here with the color checker passport in front of her. And um, incidentally, I've already white balanced the cameras, chosen, they're all in manual exposure, I've already balanced the exposure, so they are all matched to that gray card there. So um, they should come out of the camera at the same exposure, or at least close to it, and then we'll uh, take it from there for the color balance. So, so we're gonna start off with the Lumix camera. Uh, we've got Betty, everything is set up, everything should be set up and ready to go. Hmm, I'm gonna do two pictures, I'm gonna do the far back one, and the far back one's got the black, the gray, and the white backgrounds in there, plus obviously all of this. Sometimes if the color checker passport's too small in the scene, the software has a hard time finding it. Okay, I'll be honest, sometimes when it's taking up the entire screen, the software has a hard time finding it. Don't know about that. Um, but I'm just to be sure, I'm gonna go in and take a close up. This is a 15 mil lens, so we're pretty. And there's the Lumix. Let's grab the Fuji. It took me a while to figure out how to use this thing this morning. Like, man, I haven't used this in a while. That looks better, okay. And then I'm gonna do a close-up of here just so we have that as well. And then the Canon. <laughs> Sorry, I like making fun of it. It is so big in there. You know, there was a period where I, the camera that I carried was a 1DX Mark II, so the DX bodies, the big, huge, with a huge honking lens, and that was like everywhere. I took the thing, I'd be on family vacation carrying around this camera. Um, I like Lumix, so <laughs> let me tell you. All right, let's see here. Roughly the same focal length, 30-ish millimeter total. Uh, let's see, hopefully everything is still, and it's a loud noise. And then we'll do a close-up of the of the color checker passport. Okay, 
pictures. So six pictures total, one wide scene, one close up off the three cameras. Now we're going to start copying them into Lightroom. It's funny, I CF card, I had to dig around, find my old CF cards. And <laughs> CF card reader, they don't build those into the Macs anymore. Uh, build the, they don't build those into the Macs, but of course they don't build even the SD card readers into the Macs anymore, which is just seriously tragic. I am not a fan of that process. So um, for those watching live, enjoy. For those watching not live, we're going to be copying all the files and they'll be done. And just like that, all the files are copied over. All right, so now let's switch over to the Mac and see what I've got. So here are the three pictures. I've renamed them. Um, they are not being sorted by file name. There we go. Keeps them together. So there's the Canon file. So we'll take a look at the three pictures. There's our Canon files. There is the, what is that? That's the Fuji file. And then there is the Lumix file. So there's our file. So they actually, they don't look that far off at this point. They actually look really quite similar. <laughs> I gotta say, they look more similar than I expected them to. Let's look at the uh, the color checker part of it, because that's where we're really gonna see it. I wish I'd shot that a little bit closer. Let's, um, actually, that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring these close-ups straight in on the card. So we have a really nice, good, tight crop of the card for each one of these. And then we'll run through the three of them again and see how different they look. And then I will actually use this photo to run the... Um, run the calibration test. I'm not going to do that with the uh, the wide shot because it's probably not going to find it anyway. Oh, look, I was falling over apparently while I was taking this picture. Let's straighten that out just a little bit, shall we? Good to go. Okay. So let's see here. That is the Canon. This one looks a little bit more washed out. That's the Fuji. The color, I got to, okay. I was really expecting the colors to be quite a bit more different than this, but they are. Okay, look at the blues here. This is a good spot. Look at the blue, this blue in the bottom right corner. That is pretty dramatically different between the three. So that's a good one. We can, we'll be looking at that and comparing that. The reds as well. Okay, the red and the pink. As I'm going back and forth between them, I'm seeing more and more differences. So look at the red and pink in here. So there is the Canon file. There's the Fuji file. And there is the Lumix file. So there's some differences. They're subtle, though. They really are subtle. Um, and then let's see what other colors are changing. The Canon's the highest contrast right now, which is quite interesting. I might actually just be a little bit slightly underexposed. I wonder if that could be it. Let me try bringing up the exposure just a hair on this picture and see if that balances it out a little bit more. Just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Okay. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. I am, I am saying that they do all look very, very similar. So it'll be interesting to see if they become more similar looking by the time we're done. So the way this process works is you select the photo, go to, and this is once you've installed the software, by the way. So there is, if you buy a color checker passport, you get an app that you install, and obviously you can download it from their website, that installs a, a plugin for Lightroom, I guess probably Photoshop as well. I, know, I use it out of Lightroom, and its own standalone app. And it does a lot of other things more than what I'm going to do here, but what I'll be doing is running it through this plugin, which will then build a color profile based off of that photo. So that's, that's how this whole process works. So uh, with that said, let's go back to here. And it's funny the way it is, it's not a plugin from the plugin extras. You actually go to export and it creates a custom export called Color Checker Passport. So I run this, it asks me to name it. So I'm gonna call this Canon, um, what are we gonna call this? Canon Balance, we're gonna call these Balance. So Canon Balance, save that. It is going to process the files up in the top left, it says processing. And if I remember right, it's gonna tell me I have to relaunch Lightroom to load that. I think I'll be able to run the other three, the other two profiles as well before. Okay, so it's finished here. It says profile's been generated successfully. Excellent. Lightroom must be restarted. Okay, so I'm going to do, hopefully I can do the other ones first without having to relaunch re every time. Pretty sure I can. So export with preset, export to color checker passport. This is the Fuji file. So we're going to call this Fuji balance. Save that. And it's going to go through the same process. And then I will, of course, do this for the Lumix file as well and load them all up and see how they compare. So it's, it's going to be an interesting test. And hopefully, I'm hoping that this really works out well and we can see a noticeable difference. And the second part of this, which we will not do today, but if, there is, if this is successful, then the second part of this will be, this is finishing, I'm just going to go ahead and start the other one. You don't need to see this. Um, will be to do the same thing out in the field. I'm going to take these pictures out and shoot actual photos of actual things, not just Betty in the studio here. And, um, and then run through this process again and see how that works. So that will be a show that I do later. I will have to um, go out and shoot those pictures, not live, and then I'll bring them in and we'll do the live balance. So uh, let's see here, and Lumix balance, save that. So we'll, uh, 
We'll see if that works. We'll see what happens. But I think that's going to be an interesting part two to this, assuming that there's a noticeable difference here. Uh, again, I am actually surprised at how similar the three were. There, there's differences. Um, one of the biggest differences, I think, was the contrast, which is, which is interesting. But uh, I don't know. We're going to find out, aren't we? So there we go. Third one has been generated successfully. I'm going to relaunch Lightroom. You don't need to watch me do that. So I'll just hit quit and restart. And we will be ready to go. Incidentally, I am running Lightroom Classic, not Lightroom... CC, the new cloud version, this plugin, this whole light, uh, whole x Color Passport process does not work inside of Lightroom CC, the new cloud-based one. Um, I don't think there's any plugin support yet for Lightroom CC. Pretty sure that's right. Okay, so this has relaunched. Let me show you now how this works. So I choose a picture. So there's the Canon one. And then under the Develop menu, scroll down to the bottom. <laughs> we found it. Well, uh, Mr. Dennis Schmidt in the audience found it. Thank you very much, Dennis. I appreciate your help. You're awesome. Um, he has pointed me to it. So this is excellent because I had absolutely no idea that they had moved this thing. Um, this is what I get for doing things where I discover it along with you. And they have moved it completely different place, which is super annoying, but we have now found it. So here is where you find them now. Whew. Here's where we go. So let's, let me back out of here. You go to, and it used to be down at the bottom, uh, near Calibrate, it might have been another tab, uh, but it was down at the bottom. It is no longer there. Go up to the top under Profile. Under Profile, you have your Adobe profiles that are in there for doing standard looks. But then you click on Browse, and it takes you to a new window. Okay, now this window at first, you're going to see Favorites and Adobe Raw and some other ones. We're looking for one that just says Profiles. And then under here, we see Canon Balance and then three other ones, Kodak Gold 100C. These must be some that I installed from something else. Canon Balance is what I'm looking for. And the reason we're only seeing Canon Balance in here is because this is the Canon file. We cannot load the... Lumix balance file onto the Canon camera. We can't load the Fuji one onto the Lumix camera. It will only show you the profiles that are for that particular camera, which is awesome, as it keeps you from making a, a silly mistake. So anyway, back to this. So there's Canon balance. So I select that. Okay, so you saw a very subtle change. Now let's see if I can, how do I undo that? Oh, it's gonna just undo, I can. So I'm gonna undo that. So you see the, see the look, now that it's, well, let's get the mouse off of that. Oh, it's previewing it as I roll over. Oh, so you have to be careful of that. Okay, so mouse off of the cursors. There is the unbalanced, that's straight out of camera. There's the balanced. Actually, this is really good. I can just roll the mouse back and forth and you can see the difference very easily. So yeah, the blues, look at the blues. Those are definitely shifting dramatically. So the bottom two rows, we're seeing the blues change. We are seeing some of that contrast come out of it, which is awesome. So we're seeing it, that should look like it was gonna balance a little bit more. Plus look at this orange up here in the top, uh, the top row. Watch that orange, that, are, that is definitely shifting. Okay, so there's without the balance, there's with the balance. Now, one could argue that they prefer the look without the balance. That's fine. This isn't about preference, it's not about what you like, it's about what's accurate. And that is, of course, the goal of this. And that's an important point to point out. If you are, forget about my whole catalog thing that I talked about. If you're just shooting for the sake of shooting, and you like the look that comes out of your camera, then you don't need this, right? This, the, this is so that you can get an accurate look, an accurate um, a representation of what you photographed. True story, I did a shoot for a company, um, what is it called? It's like a doll, not a dollar store, but something like that anyway, for like a grand opening. And their sign is yellow. They have a very specific yellow. So, you know, I wanted to balance that yellow, make sure the photos I gave him balance that. But more importantly, when I was inside, they had a Tony the Tiger dressed up in a costume and I got a picture of the Tony the Tiger holding a cornflakes or whatever it is, a Frosted Flakes box. And that photo, when I'm looking at it on screen, I'm going, okay, is that Tony the Tiger color right? And so... I, anticipating this, I used my color checker passport and the lighting in that room was, was, the store was obviously horrendous. I took a picture of that, um, balanced it in there. And then once I loaded the balance up, I was like, whoa, that was a huge difference. Huge. And you really looked at it and go, yeah, that's the right color. I did a whole show on that. It was quite a while ago, but we'll link to that up here because I did do a show on that. It was kind of cool if you're interested in that. Um, but anyway, let's get back to this. So, all right, that's the Canon file loaded up. Now I'm going to go over to the Fuji file. Um, oh, good, it's, it kept me in this profile window. And so now here we go again. I'm just rolling my mouse back and forth across the Fuji balance. You can see there's my Fuji balance preset, the one that I created. And we are seeing the blues and the oranges shifting. We're also seeing the greens shifting a bit. So that's quite interesting. All right, we're going to go ahead and click that to load it. And then I'll go to the Lumix one. And same thing. Uh, so there's just the one profile for this. And I go back and forth. And we're seeing... The blues shift a little bit. Um, I'm seeing this top blue shift. This top blue and goldish orange-ish yellow are both switching a bit. 
Uh, and there we go. Okay, so now all three of those have been added. So now, in theory, when I go between these three pictures, they should look very, very similar. And I would say, let's see here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is looking pretty darn good, actually. I'm thinking they're looking pretty darn good. So let me apply. It's really hard to, to truly compare. Can I do it? Let me do this. Let me select all of these and go into the compare mode. Let's close this out and make us, give ourselves a little bit more space. And they're looking, I mean, those are looking pretty consistent. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, someone's saying in the comments, um, slight white balance and contrast changes. Uh, the white balance, okay, well, let's, let's take this one step further then, and let's do the white balance adjustments. So let's get out of the survey mode, um, and let's do this. Let me go and do a white balance on, I guess I'll use the white, white chip there. So I'm going to go into the develop mode, grab the eyedropper, and white balance on that. Well, that has shifted that quite a bit, hasn't it? Maybe I'll do it off the gray. Let me undo that. I'm gonna undo that. I'm going to white balance off of the... There, that's a little bit more even. I think the other one was going too cool. Um, it might have been slightly overexposed. That's so bouncing off of that. These, remember, the cameras were all custom white balanced, so based off of the gray card, so they should be even in that regard. Um, I will agree there is still a contrast change. The Canon is still the highest contrast file, but let's see here. I'm looking at the uh, histogram right now. My white's the same, so there's my brightest point in the Lumix file is up here. Let's go to the Fuji file, same, Canon file. Yeah, Canon file is definitely shifting a little bit darker. Maybe I'll bring up the exposure on that Canon file just a tiny, tiny bit because I do feel like it is still a little bit darker, which is making it look a little bit higher contrast than the other ones. Okay, let me just select all these again, pull them all up on screen again in the survey mode. And, you know, they are looking very, very similar. Very similar. So here's what I'm going to do now. Let's go ahead and bring up these three pictures in the survey mode um, and see. And again, we're, we are really splitting hairs. I mean, they are all looking quite, quite similar. It's funny to see the aspect ratio change from the 2.32 two of the Canon to the, and the Fuji to the 4.3 of the Lumix file there. Um, you know, it's pretty similar. But let's go ahead and uh, let's just apply the same color balance to each one of these. So let's uh, get out of the survey mode. And I'm going to select both of these. No, let's just, let's just do it this way. I'll just go in and do it. We'll do it manually. Go into develop, go to browse, and add the Canon file to that. Add the Fuji file to that. You are definitely seeing a shift in the pictures when I, when I do that. Um, I would actually say the Lumix shifted the least. That would be that's kind of my guess there. Let's go back into the survey mode. And so now we're seeing all three of them with the balance applied. And now they really do look very, very similar. Very similar, I think. Now, I haven't done redone the white balance on each of these, but that barely, barely touched. That barely shifted anything, but let's just do it just for the sake of consistency. So let's go into here, go into develop mode, and grab white balance, and I'm going to grab it off of that third chip down. Again, white balance, third chip down, and last time, white balance, third chip down. Perfect. There we go. So now those are white balance balanced. I mean, that is looking pretty darn consistent. Pretty darn consistent. So interesting. I think it is an interesting result. Um, I, I, it is, they were more similar to start than I expected them to be. They are looking virtually identical now. Um, what I will have to do is bring them up into Photoshop and do a really good side-by-side -side comparison, a really, um, really split. You know what? We could do that. That's what we're going to do. Okay, this is going to be another one of those big old edits. For the, those watching live, you're going to watch this. For those watching not live, and now we've got everything stacked up in Photoshop and ready to compare. So what I've done is I've taken uh, the photos of the close-ups of the card, stacked them up on layers in Photoshop so I can just toggle the layers on and off, and we can more easily see if there is a difference. And then I'll move them around and we can look at them side by side as well. So let's just uh, take a quick look. Here is the Fuji on top. Turn that off. We see the Canon underneath it. Turn that off and see the Lumix underneath that. So let me just toggle back and forth between the Canon and the Lumix. And I would say those colors are pretty darn consistent in there. Here's the Fuji and the Lumix. Pretty darn consistent. Fuji is the lowest contrast of these, it would seem. Um, we are definitely seeing a little bit of a contrast shift. Contrast shift. Let's go between Canon and Fuji. But the colors are really, really consistent, aren't they? And well, then that was the whole goal. That's what we wanted to see.
that is the that is the the test that we've done today. So that's what I wanted to do here. I would say that the results are so close to the same, which is what I was hoping we would see, even though admittedly they were not as different as I expected them to be in the beginning, that we are in fact going to do a part two of this show. Part two of the show will come at a later date. There will be a tile that comes up on screen as this show ends, which will allow you to see the second show. And um, what I will do is take these three cameras out and go out and take some pictures out in the real world. And under a variety of different settings, I will of course take another picture of the color profile, color, color passport, so that I can do a new calibration, whatever that day is, whether it's a sunny day, foggy day, whatever it is. And uh, then we'll bring it back in here. So that will be released at some future date. And again, that will be on a tile coming up on the end of the screen, on the end of this show in just a moment here. In the meantime, we're going to switch over to the Q&A portion of the show. So if you are watching live, stick around for the Q&A and get your questions ready, and we'll try to address them in just a moment.